Hello and welcome to Unhinged, Unqualified, Unfortunate, a video pod where I give heartfelt advice and opinions on subjects that I'm not educated in. I'm your host, Quinn the Pin Whalen. Today I'm going to be talking about the worst take I've ever seen online. You see a lot of takes online. It's just... yeah. Um, I'm on Twitter. You see a lot of takes on Twitter. I... The worst take I've ever seen online, it's from Letterboxd. It's a, technically a review of a movie. It is like two sentences. Um, where to start? Uh, Letterboxd. You might know Letterboxd. It's like a social movie log app. Um, you can track movies you've watched. Give them a score out of five. Put a review. Like other people's reviews, check out the cast and crew of movies, kind of like IMDb. A little more... The reviews are a bigger deal on Letterboxd than they are on IMDb. Like, I'll check IMDb for, like, trailers, cast, and crew information more so than I'll go, I would go to Letterboxd. Letterboxd, when I had it on my phone, was really just for, like, logging movies I've watched, putting the little five out of five review up. Um, following, like, a couple of my friends use it. Really kind of neat for that purpose. Um, like most stuff, it got annoying the more uninterrupted time that I used it. You can only read so many reviews on Letterboxd, like, going, because it usually goes down from, like, popular reviews to less popular. At the top... As expected, you would see, like, a funny joke review, that kind of thing. Some people, you want your review to be short on Letterbox. The point of this video is not to talk about Letterbox, but here we are. You want your review to be really short. It was kind of fun. I wrote a couple long reviews because I was bored one day and it was fun. But the best kind of Letterbox review is, like, three sentences and it's and it's funny, and that's really it. Like, the point of reviews online really is to be funny and get attention, which is fine. I'm not saying that as a roast. Attention feels great. So, go get it. Um, <laughs> get it, girl. Attention slaps. Um, but, like, Letterboxd, there are people on Letterboxd, and you'll see, I, I've never read a long review on Letterboxd. I see they, they post, like, movie 150 I've watched this year, and then they post a quote from the movie that's already too much information for your review on Letterboxd. It's just got to be two sentences, you know? The first thing I'm thinking of right now is the review I think Patrick Willems posted about the movie Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. He was just like another Marvel movie that would have been twice as good if it had half the budget. And I was like, hey, that's kind of funny. Probably true. The movie's pretty good. I liked it. Anyway, I like Patrick Holmes' videos. All around good experience right there. But like, the further down you scroll, the more you get into like... Because the top takes, like, <laughs> in terms of like the classism of Letterbox, at the very top you have people, you always have like, the, the people that... What am I doing right now? You have people that like seem untouchable, right? They don't need to be shitty in their reviews to get the likes and noto notoriety, you know? But under, you get so far down, and then you really do. They they really do. Anyway, so that's Letterbox. So, bad takes online. Again, this is my heartfelt advice and opinions, and I'm not educated. But, like, what is bad takes online? For me, it's, well, like, the worst take, which I will get into, is this kind of take. It's... The take that is not satisfied to be itself. It's not a take, it's a take that is insecure about itself. You, it's not enough to just like something, right? You can't, if you want people to notice your take online, it's not enough to just be like, nice, this movie's good. And that's fine-ish, because jokes are good. That's my hot take. Jokes are good. You can put that in the headlines of the newspaper. Quinn thinks jokes are good. 
because the currency of online is to get like likes and change blah, 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 doesn't matter but like the take that's like this you know you watch such and such a movie and you're like this like easy like the takes that go after like the low hanging fruit the stuff that's so popular it's cool to dunk on them like the mcu it's fun to dunk on it because it's so huge it doesn't matter you don't have to defend the mcu it's huge you don't have to you can you can have your martin scorsese take you can be like it's a theme park ride it's not a movie you can be like oh i just watched this indie movie it costs two dollars to make it's better than anything the mcu has ever done that's the kind of take that the worst take i've ever seen online is like you know, it's not enough to just like something. You also have to drag something else. And that's fine. It's the internet. It's gonna happen. We've accepted it. It's fine. This movie is better than any song that Radiohead has ever made. Like, nonsense, opinion, two things, nothing to, to have anything to do with each other. But you just, if you're gonna like something, you might as well dunk on something else. It's fine. Right, okay, actually, I had an example that did come to mind while I was taking notes for this. It's, It was a tweet by, I think, like, Phil Jameson. It was a tweet about, I guess, an article that someone wrote about Taylor Swift songs. Maybe, again, right now, I'm, I preface this whole show with I don't know what I'm talking about, but even here, I especially don't. Anyway, I think Phil Jameson had a tweet. I'll probably find it and try to put it around me, but... He had a tweet that was like, Taylor Swift puts a bad part, a bad moment in all of her songs so that they stick in your head more. Because if the song's good, it's not enough to just like something. If a song's good, it doesn't matter. It has to have something to hook you. And an easy way to do that is to also be terrible a little bit in a controlled sort of way. That does show some kind of mastery, I guess, now that I'm saying it out loud. But is that the kind of mastery you want to have? I don't know. Is it morally good? I don't know. I'm not educated. Anyway, so like, and the tweet was kind of meta in that sense that it was like, Taylor Swift puts one bad moment in every song she writes, so they stick in your head more. Also, Majora's Mask is a better game than Ocarina of Time. That tweet, very funny. I love it. It's just the right amount of meta. It was funny. I don't really care if Majora's Mask is better than Ocarina of Time. I finished Ocarina of Time. I liked it. I've started Majora's Mask a couple times, gotten stuck very early on because I'm bad at video games, and I would like to I would like to play it. It seems fun. Anyway, this video is about Majora's Mask. When it comes to takes, the goal is to stick in someone's head. When I think and I hate that more and more every day, not because I'm like, ugh, why can't people just be like me? But you, you see stuff and you can't unsee it. And I'm at a point where sometimes I see takes and I just, I regret reading them so much because I know that I'm going to think about them. It's not that I disagree or agree or even have a say in it. It's just that whatever they've said, I just know I'm going to think about it. And I don't like that because I would rather think about other things, especially when it comes to like people that are actually critics. That's a weird career to have the more I think about it because you surround yourself with so much of a kind of thing that it warps your perspective on it. So even as a consumer, it the idea of a critic doesn't really work to guide your opinion because you're not a critic and the opinion you're reading is from a critic. So that's something to think about. That's something to chew on. Music reviews especially. There's a music reviewer out there that I watch. There's like two music reviewers out there that I watch every now and then. One of them's a little more, I think, joke oriented and informational and a little bit less, a little bit less opinions, more information and like the context of the music, which I like because it's less, you know, just subjective opinions. It's more like, you know, okay, so this is the song, this is this, blah, 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 blah. And you kind of get more of a sense of like, okay, how does the song fit into this moment right now? That's pretty cool. Um, where was I going with that? Anyway, the, the, the other music reviewer that I watch sometimes, more and more rarely, because I know that I watching it is bad for me, because it just... Because I'll look up albums that I know I like, and then 
I know they're not going to like it because I've watched enough of them already to know that our music taste is just different. And maybe it's because they're a critic and they take in so much music that their perspective is warped in that way that this type of music, the music I like, they're not going to like it just because of how much music they've consumed. Like, is that the factor that's driving this opinion or is it just that they don't like it? Either way, it doesn't matter because I like it and that's enough. If you like music, that's enough. Just like the music you like, you don't need validate validation from smart music critic person. That's the kind of thing. So that's like one end of it, I guess. One reason why I would watch this critic is I would just watch because I sometimes I am curious to see what people don't like about things that I like. Maybe it's the spirit of searching for ways to improve on things. Maybe it's just morbid curiosity. I don't know. I'm not educated in myself. So I do find it neat sometimes because sometimes they sometimes they have fair points. And that's cool. They have a lot of takes. They're a music critic. That's their job is to opinions. So sometimes opinions is good. Sometimes opinions is bad. So sometimes it's nice to hear things that people don't like about things you like. So you can just kind of broaden your horizons and, you know, just... So sometimes knowledge is just good. Um, and then sometimes it's nice to hear nice things about what you like. That's cool. Yeah, that's the whole point of fan communities, probably. Um, the worst side of that, the worst side of that coin is going out of your way to see people bash stuff that you don't like, which is the more infectious part of the worst take I've ever seen online. Because a take that likes something is not going to be the take that sticks in your head forever. Because you just kind of agree and that's it. You know, if you're, if I'm like, wow, this album's good, the guitar tone is really nice. And then someone else is like, yes, that is a very well put opinion. I agree, the guitar tone is very nice. We both nod, we shake hands, we go our separate ways, we go to sleep for eight hours and we wake up the next day having forgot about that conversation. The take that sticks with you is the one that disagrees with you, but it's also probably the one that dunks on the thing that you like. And in like that MCU example, sometimes it's not even the thing you like, because I'm at the point where I just don't like that kind of take. And because I don't like that kind of take, I think that I'm kind of screwing myself because it sticks with me more, even if I don't care about what they're dunking on. I don't care if you dunk on the MCU, but it still kind of sticks with me because I know you're just dunking on it for cool points, and that's cheap, and that... So you're not better than the MCU for dunking on it because, like, uh, unless the point was to dunk on the MCU. Like, that's fine. If you want to criticize the MCU for, like, actual reasons and that kind of thing, sure, go for it. That's, that's fine. But, like, to be like, wow, I really like the movie The Lobster. It's better than the MCU. Like... Leave the MCU out of it. No one cares. That's the kind of that's the take that's gonna stick with you more, especially when it's something that you like. The worst take I've ever seen does not dunk on something as big and unstoppable as the MCU. It dunks on something that I don't even really necessarily have that much of a personal attachment to. Um, but I'll get into that. The worst take I've ever seen online is was a review for uh, Bo Burnham's musical comedy special, Inside. I don't really want to talk about Inside online, but I know I have to, and I also do kind of want to because it's fun. Actually, wait, I just remembered something else about critics that I wanted to mention. The, the other side of the coin of seeking out like validation on opinions of stuff that you like, the other side of that coin is sometimes it's more... It's... Also equally validating, but more malicious, but like as malicious as you can get just dunking on movies on the internet, um, is going to critics to validate opinions on stuff that you don't like already. So, cause it's funny and it's, it's infectious in the way that funny jokes are infectious, but it's also like... <laughs> For some reason, I'm thinking of that meme, the haha sickos meme. It's like becoming that guy, the haha sickos meme guy in the window. 
because it's like, uh, I just hate, I just hate Drake. So I will <laughs> look up people bashing on Drake's music so that I feel better because I don't like him and neither does the smart guy. So we have that in common. So now I am smart. That's fun to do. It's fine. But it's a slippery slope because sometimes they're not going to like the thing that you like. And then you're going to feel like a big old dum-dum and you're going to have to cope with the fact that like the thing, the place that you've been going to to be validated for being smart is now calling you a dum-dum. And I guess that's the danger that I've run into now that I'm saying these thoughts out loud. I didn't really think this part of the video out that far and this is the conclusion that I guess I've come to. It's frustrating because you want to go and watch Internet Critic Man dunk on Drake so that you feel cool about not liking Drake. But then what if he dunks on Radiohead and you like Radiohead and now you feel <laughs> embarrassed in your bedroom alone because you like Radiohead and he doesn't? And what do you just do with that? That's kind of frustrating. And you're like, well, he just doesn't get it. And you, you know, you start arguing with him to yourself and you're like, okay, well, he just doesn't get it. Or he hates this sound, but I like this sound. And he doesn't like this kind of song structure, but I like this song structure. And he, do he doesn't get it. I get it. He doesn't. I'm cool. He's not. But also he is cool because he doesn't like the thing that I don't like. So I'm still going to go there. Anyway, there are albums that I've looked up and I've watched reviews for and they hate it. And I still like that album. And it was still kind of interesting and sort of constructive to see things that people don't like about music that I like. But it's not worth being poisoned with having to think about that review every time I listen to the album. That's one of the main takeaways I think I want to lay out here is that music reviews are not worth it. <laughs> because you will poison music that you like with someone else's opinion that doesn't matter because no one's opinions matter and it's not worth being cursed with every time I listen to you know a protest like protest the heroes record scurrilous every time I listen to scurrilous I'm cursed with thinking about that one guy who reviewed it and was like this album sucks butt and I don't like the drumming I, you know it's not worth every time I listen to Skrillex thinking about how that one guy doesn't like the drumming. It's it's just not worth it. Music reviews are not worth it. Anyway, movie reviews are also not worth it, which will bring us to where we're going. The take is about Bo Burnham's inside. Okay, we're back on track. I watched Bo Burnham's inside a couple times. And I'm embarrassed about it because people talk about it online. And that's just one of those... I haven't fully reconciled why or anything like that. I don't know. It's like when you like Rick and Morty and you're like, Ugh, I like Rick and Morty, but I don't want to be associated with people that like Rick and Morty. But also I, I do, kind of. I don't know. It's one of those things. We're just going to have to move past it. Bo Burnham's Inside is fine. It's pretty good. There was a lot of wow factor, I guess, when I watched it for the first time because it had just come out. I hadn't seen any takes online about it. I didn't know how, how you know, ubiquitous it was going to become online after it came out because I guess I knew that Bo Burnham had a lot of diehard fans because all I'd heard about Bo Burnham and his career was like people being like, oh my god, so funny, so good songs, so funny, so good songs, so good jokes. Um, and then I was like, the little Netflix preview, it just kind of got me, and I watched it, and I was like, wow, like, you know, he really knows how to use his camera. His songwriting is, is really good. I like a lot of the song structure he did is like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, and that's the end. And I like that song structure. I think it's, the two chorus is one thing that's really infectious because you want to hear a chorus three times but then it only happens twice and then that's in your head and then also the bridge is usually like a repeating bridge and then that gets in your head it's double whammy and then usually there's also like a musical melody that gets in your head anyway there's a lot of ways good at writing catchy songs good at writing jokey songs um good at writing sad songs that was another thing it's pretty good i liked it 
and then like the TikTok audios became everywhere and everybody had takes on it. And I read, I just read too many letterbox reviews on it. And then it started to get kind of warped in my mind. So I was like, some of the songs started to, I don't know. When I started looking at it as a whole, I started feeling different about it. I, it's weird because I'm not, every time I've tried to think about how I feel about it, I've gotten kind of tangled in my own opinion just in the sense that, like, I want to just have a regular opinion, but it's so hard because now I've digested so many other people's opinions that I don't know anymore. But I, I do, it's well made, and I'm sure about that. It's well put together, technically. And I do think overall, like, it's not offensive, it's not harmful to like. You know, it's it's just, you know, it's just funny songs. And, you know, I saw people, like, I, when I was browsing a lot of takes on it, like, the, a lot of the criticisms of it, and they were, like, a lot of them were kind of bad faith criticisms of it, you know, that a lot of them were just, like, I just hate Bo Burnham. And I was, like, all right, fair enough. Or, like, I just don't like his brand of, like, millennial white boy humor, which, like, sure. Or, like, I don't like his brand of sad boy humor humor or whatever sure or like I don't I don't like the way that he's trying to be deep with jokes which that was kind of the part that I started thinking about more as I was like the amount of sad the joke ratio and the way it's happening is starting to wane on me I think and you know it sucks to have the take of it got too popular so it started to get annoying but I guess that's just part of reality that we have to accept and I really, I really tried to avoid the TikTok audios for it. Like every time, like I, I just can't, you know, I liked for a little bit, I liked listening to the songs, you know, just driving around, you know, they're fun to sing along to. He writes good hooks. They're fun to sing along to. They're funny jokes. Um, but yeah, like it, it was a lot and still is. And I would still avoid the TikTok audios, especially because I don't know. I'm not that invested in Bo Burnham as an artist person. So I guess that's like the context of Bo Burnham's inside. The take is not down. The take is not dragging Bo Burnham's inside. Like, and I'm not, I'm not the one, not that I would be the one to like leap to the defense of Bo Burnham's inside. Um, I think it's good. I don't think it's amazing or like it is it does have that kind of feeling of like you know a lot of attention was paid to this you know there's not a lot of dead air in it which is something that is worthwhile that is like you know a commendable feat to have something like as long as it is and not really feel like there's much of any wasted time in it so that's cool the worst take i've seen online well, actually, there was another one. Of the, in the same vein of worst take I've seen online, there was a review on Letterboxd for Bo Burnham's Inside. It just says, white woman's Instagram greater than sign every song that's been created. Like, that kind of thing, sure. It's just, it's just the kind of take that wants to get in your head, but it's... Like, it's every song that's been created. It's it's a joke. It's not real. It's still kind of stuck in my head, which sucks, because I like other songs that have been created. And, <laughs> you know, that's the other thing that I don't really like about this whole thing, is that talking about it feels ridiculous. You know, at any point in... If I was not saying this to a microphone, and instead I was saying this whole thing to a person, I would, with open arms, welcome them to say this is stupid, stop talking about it, because it's just an online take. Who cares? I do. And it's embarrassing, but it's stuck in my head, and it's really annoying. I'm not going to change anything with this video, but and I'm doing it. It's, it's kind of cathartic to be like, this has been really frustrating me. I'm still thinking about it. I've read this take like probably six months ago. Like it was around the time when it came out, which I don't remember when that was. 
Maybe it was a year ago. I don't remember when Bo Burnham's Inside came out. Okay, wait. No, I have the screen grab of the review. The review was posted June 2021. So yeah, about six months ago, seven months ago, this take was posted. I read it. And every now and then I think about it and I get unreasonably upset because I just hate the way that this person decided to express their opinion. It's not the opinion that's frustrating because it's a joke. It's not... Uh, it's easily interpreted as not a serious opinion. Maybe this person really does hate the thing that they're dragging in this review, which will make more sense when I say what the take is. <laughs> I've built it up way too much. Anyway, but like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not about the take. It's about the delivery and the insidiousness of how it's formatted. You know, it's not that you like Bo Burnham's inside or that you don't like the thing you're dragging. It's not that you don't like every song that's been created and you really like white woman's Instagram. It's that you chose to put those two side by side for whatever reason, because because of like, because of get like, because of get click. The worst take I've ever seen online I gotta read it, but it's so hard to read. So, okay, well, the first half is easy to read. It's just, in parentheses, it's a quote from Bo Burnham's Inside. Can any single person shut the fuck up about any single thing for an hour? Is that possible? I don't... The, like, you know, the, you know the, the irony's right there, because this person is giving a take online. Maybe this person's a genius, and they put that quote at the top just to, like, annoy me personally. They put that quote at the top because they are not shutting up for a single thing for an hour at all. Why did they choose that quote? It's online, so I have to assume they just put it there because they think it's funny and, like, I guess that is part of something that I don't like about Bo Burns Inside. I don't know. Like, this, I, the millennial self-awareness humor... It is not for everyone, and the more of it I digest, the more I'm like, okay, no, yeah, I can see I, I can see through the cracks a little bit at what this is, and it doesn't hold up to me that much anymore. And it's it's fine if it holds up for you. It is. It's the same with like community. I have a friend that doesn't like community or Rick and Morty or like that Dan Harmon type of humor that is very meta and very trying hard, very meta, but also trying very hard to look like it doesn't care. And in, like part of that is the point. Like the whole Jeff Winger, the whole Rick Sanchez attitude, the I don't care at all, but also I clearly care a lot. I get that that doesn't land for some people. I like it. I think it's fine as a show, as a thing to watch. And then the th as a thing to watch while you eat a burrito, like it's, I, 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 it's fine. I like it. It's good. Um, but I get that it doesn't land for everyone. And the more I kind of, you know, the more I, like, you know, sat in my, the, the more I sat by the window listening to the birds sing and frolic and the sunshine over the hill. And I thought in deep reflection about my opinions on Bo Burnham's Inside, the more I thought, you know, okay, maybe the self-referential humor is kind of annoying sometimes. Especially that bit of the, can anyone shut up for an hour? Because that's, it's kind of like having a take, ha trying to have the first take about the internet that anyone's ever had. But the internet is old, and we're all old and dying. And then to make that take of, can anyone just stop tweeting is so dated that it's not even worth, it's so far beyond dated because we all have this attitude of like things on the internet aging at light speed. So it's already so beyond dated that to even take the time to be like that's a really contrived take to have is a waste of everyone's time. Which sounds extremely harsh to my ears as I'm saying it. Again, I think <laughs> think Inside is pretty good. It's worth the watch. But that part is not my favorite. And I think it's a very fair thing to criticize even and that style of humor runs throughout the whole thing and if that's not your thing 
that's going to be a, a big old bummer. So yeah, putting at the, you know, the preface to the worst take I've ever seen online being, can anyone stop sharing takes? It didn't bother me because it didn't bother me because I kind of forgot it was there until I went to get this screen grab of it. But reading it now, it really does kind of make me <laughs> frustrated a lot, you know, because in my head, the portrait I have of this person writing this review, the portrait I have of them is not someone who put that quote in there to be like, also, the following take is stinks like a butt and you should forget about it because that's the point. It's weirdly, it's failing at the kind of self-referential humor that goes through Bo Burnham's inside. The, the portrait of the person I have in my head writing this review is not thinking that, is not trying to be self-aware humor like Bo Burnham does in his own special that we're talking about. The portrait of the person I have in my head writing this is just that they thought that line was funny, so they put it in their review. Which is, I guess, in my, the words I just thought of were, that's an intellectual failing. But that's too wordy for me, so I'm not gonna... I, I've already called it that. Oops. But, like, that sucks, <laughs> and I don't like it. Why did you choose... Can any single person shut the fuck up about any single thing for an hour? Is that possible? To put that quote as the preface for your review, it sucks like a butt. Because either you thought that was just a funny joke, so you put it in there which means you kind of missed the point on it, or you did get the point on that and you put that in there as kind of a meta commentary that your own opinion is nonsense and everyone's opinions are nonsense and blah, 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 blah. Nothing's real. Everyone is a mushroom. We all live on a big floating rock and nothing matters. So you put that there as a meta commentary on your own thing, whatever. In either case, that's super annoying and I wish you hadn't done it. But here we are. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going insane. I'm going to drink some water right now. The next sentence of the review, so there's two lines. The first line is that quote. The second line starts with this. Man, this was truly special. Sure, that's fine. You could stop there, for one thing. That would have been great to just be like, I liked this. Not only did I like it, I think it was special. I think it rises above the murk. I think it, you know, it stands out. It's unique, it has something to say, it's worth looking at. I liked it, and I I care. Is it so hard to just say that you care about something, even when it's stupid? Especially when it's stupid. It's so hard to just say that you care about something stupid, because someone out there is going to hate you for it. <laughs> or make fun of you, because they can't say that they just care about something stupid. You have to dunk on something else, so that everyone knows that you don't care, you actually just wanted to dunk on this other thing. That's the other thing, is you're, dis you're devaluing caring about something by, in the same breath, saying that you hate something else. That's not something I came in here wanting to say, but now I really feel good about that take. It's not enough to just say that I love Mario games. Or not even that it's not enough. I'm not comfortable saying that I like Mario games enough that I can just say I like Mario games. I also have to say that I hate Patrick Starr from SpongeBob. That was not an improvised grab. There's a drawing of him across the room that I'm looking directly at. It's insane that people are afraid to say that they care about stuff, including myself. What am I talking about? People are too embarrassed to say that they care about Pokemon, to just accept Pokemon into your life. People are too insecure and too embarrassed to just say that you like something and that have that be enough. You also have to dunk on something else. You have to. Because if you don't, 
They're going to come for you. They're going to drag you next if you don't also dunk on Patrick Starr from the kids' cartoon SpongeBob SquarePants. If you don't dunk on Patrick Starr, you're next. <laughs> They're going to knock down your door, pull you away from your keyboard, and just beat the crap out of you because you like Charizard. When did that become such a dangerous take to like Charizard? I get that he gets a lot of over-attention, and his design is simple. And sometimes you can hate minimalism for being lazy. But I like Charizard. I like him. And that's enough. I don't have to dunk on Ger Garber Garbador or Trubbish. Because those are good too. I like those Pokemon too. You don't have you don't have to be afraid anymore to like something because I'm here and I'm giving you the green light to just like the things that you like and you don't have to dunk on Patrick Star or the Gen 5 Pokemon or Charizard. You're allowed to just say to other people that you like it. You can like it and you don't have to keep it a secret. You can tweet that you like Pokemon Legends Arceus, and you don't have to validate or hide the fact that you care about it by dunking on something else. You don't have to put up a front. You can just be yourself and like what you like. Can any single person shut the fuck up about any single thing for an hour? Is that possible? Next line. Man, this was truly special. And the cinematography, Sir Roger Deakins could never. I don't care that much about Roger Deakins. I think it's weird that you called him Sir, because that's like a respect thing. So why did you put that there if you were just going to drag him? And why are you dragging him? Why him? Why Roger Deakins? What did he do, you know? He didn't do anything. <laughs> He's cinematographed so many movies. And they're all so it's they're all so good. At least that part of them. You know what movie's good? Blade Runner 2049. You know what part of that movie in particular is really good? The cinematography. Why did you have to go after that? You don't. You could have just liked that Bo Burnham is kind of skilled, not talented, skilled, because he's practiced. He's he's put in the work. He's a skilled person. Talent you're born with, skill you earn with practice, and he has that. He's skilled at working a camera and like setting up lights and props and doing it by himself, and he did a really impressive job. You know who else did a really impressive job? Roger Deakins! You didn't have to do that. Why did you do that? Roger Deakins is fine. And secondly, he's very old. He's he's put in so much work. I haven't watched all the movies Roger Deakins did. Maybe there's some stinkers in there. Maybe he really whiffed it on some of the movies he's done. I don't know. I'm not going to go after him for it either. Even if I found out that he did. You don't have to. His IMDb page is so long because he's cinematographer to so many movies. And he's done so good at it. And I don't want to... When I started taking notes about this too, for a bit I was like, and the cinematography and Bo Burnham's inside. Like the whole point is you could do it yourself. Like he, he did it. By himself, in a room, as one guy. You know? If I put my... Like, sure. If I put my mind to it... <laughs> this is, like... And, and I'm not saying... I'm not saying this because I'm amazing. I'm not. I'm terrible. But, like, if you... To the same extent that, like, if you dedicate a lot of time to something, you'll get good at it. You... Like, other people could do what Roger Deakins did. Sure. If they put the time in. If they... 
dedicated their whole life to being a cinematographer. Sure, you could also be a really good cinematographer. That's fine. I'm not saying he's God. I'm not dying on the hill of Roger Deegan's. I don't have to. I don't want to. But why, why, why did you like this so much that you had to go after the career of someone who has nothing to do with this? Just, like, why'd you, why'd you, like, what's the, what's the deal, man? Like, what's your problem? What's my problem? Why am I yelling about this? I get so worked up when I think about it. And it's, it's so out of character for me. I'm usually a really chill guy. The cinematography, Roger Deakins could never, yeah, he could. I could. Any of us could. That's the whole point. He did it alone inside. He had a really expensive camera. I couldn't afford it. But if I could, then I could just do it. It's not that hard. It's kind of hard, sure. To the extent that other things are hard. You know what's hard? Being really good at darts or bowling. You know? Sometimes they don't seem that hard because you just roll a ball and knock down a bunch of pins. But like it is hard. It's hard to it's hard to be a really good bowler. You gotta put you gotta put the time in. And both these people did. You're discrediting Bo Burnham because I I don't wanna dunk on Bo Burnham. For no reason. Because you went after Roger Deakins. I don't want to pick a side between Bo Burnham and Roger Deakins. But that's what you want me to do. You want me to you want me to put on the Roger Deakins t-shirt. You want me to go to war. You want me to you want me to fight and die and bleed and die again for Roger Deakins. So that you can get likes on your opinion. I'm looking at the screen grab now. This review has 217 likes. And it's ruined my life. My brain is poisoned by this review, and I'll never, I'll never forget it. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be 80 years old, maybe, and I'm gonna be like, hey kids, you know what? A take ruined my whole life. <laughs> this one. I, I like Charizard. You know. I'm, I'm at. Here's a weird sentence. And then followed by another weird sentence. The first weird sentence goes, I'm at a point in my life where I can admit that I like Charizard. Here's the other weird sentence. I'm at the point in my life... I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm at the point in my life where I will admit that this online review for a internet comedy special has me so riled up that I've yelled about it for 45 minutes or however long it's been. And I'm okay with that. I'm at peace. I've come to terms with the fact that I care about it. I'm not trying to pretend that I don't. I don't think it's stupid to get upset when people make fun of stuff that you like. I don't think that's stupid. And, you know, yeah, that's not stupid. It's, if you like something and someone makes fun of it, it's not weird to, like, get kind of defensive, you know? I think that's natural. It does suck that Roger Deakins had nothing to do with this, you know? Your tweet wasn't, I think Roger Deakins is kind of overrated. You know what I prefer? The cinematography and Bo Burnham's inside. That'd be a whole, that'd be a whole different story. This video would be completely different if... Your main target was Roger Deakins, but he was an afterthought. And for what? For no reason. <laughs> I think I'm done now. I think I've calmed down a lot. I am still pretty upset. <sighs> well, that about does it. <laughs> That's the worst take I've ever seen online. Kind of. I mean, there's probably worse takes. That's the thing, too. There's probably worse takes. You know, there's probably, like, you know what's a masterpiece? The Emoji Movie. Quinn, why are you dunking on the Emoji Movie? That's the whole point of the video is not to just recklessly dunk on stuff that you don't like. Well, here's the thing. It's just an example I was pulling out of thin air. I know that the Emoji Movie is an easy target, an overrated easy target, but whatever. Anyway, it's okay to just like stuff, and it's okay to not like stuff. I don't have a problem with that. And it's not morally bankrupt to dunk on stuff online. It's, no one cares, it's fine. I think it's kind of shitty to word stuff and phrase things in a way that discredit people's work 
so that people will like your movie review. I just think that that kind of sucks. And that's... I don't know. That feels kind of like... I don't remember what the term is. It feels kind of high horsey. Like, oh, I'm not... Oh, I would never stoop to that level. I absolutely would. I'm terrible. Sometimes I do think it's funny to dunk on an easy target. I think it's fine. But I think it is important to recognize when you do that, that that's what you're doing. So maybe this video wasn't as poignant as I thought it was. But who cares? It's just, again, this is all just my uneducated and unqualified and unfortunate thoughts and opinions. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I've been Quinn the Super Pin Whalen. This has been Unhinged, Unqualified, Unfortunate. I did just forget the title, that's why I hesitated, because I forgot the title to my own idea. Let me know what you guys think. Did you think, was that the best opinion you've ever heard in your life? I can honestly say that I hope it wasn't because I just talked for a really long time about why I don't think it was very good. But if you disagree, that's okay. And we could even still be friends if you think that that was a good thing to post online. I think that we, we could get over it because it is just a movie and it's just, it's just one opinion about one movie that I don't think about that often. Like, I do think about it pretty often. Again, I'm not trying to put up a front that I'm a genius. I'm just, this is just something I've been thinking about for a while. I thought that it was worth sharing, and I think maybe we can all leave here just for some reason feeling a little bit better. For some reason. <laughs> I, I haven't worked that out, but maybe. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. You can check out my other videos. They're not like this. You could listen to music that I've made, and you can make fun of it if you want. Some of it's on Bandcamp, some of it's on YouTube. Um, I play bass in a metal band called Dendron, and we recently released an album called To Save Ourselves. It's on Spotify and Apple Music and on YouTube. You can find it, Dendron NL. Dendron is a word that has to do with plants, but the songs are not about plants. They're about other stuff. I got really worked up about this. And I'm coming down from it, and it feels good. It does. It feels good to have let it out. Maybe the Purge movies were right. Maybe it is nice to... Okay, maybe the Purge movies weren't right. But it's, you know, sometimes it's okay to get worked up about stuff. Anyway, I'm Quinn. Some say that ignorance is bliss, but if that's the case, why am I so sad? See you next time.